All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright. Uh, last time we had one hell of a marathon stream and made our way through case number three, uh, recipe for turnabout, or something like that. I can't remember the name. Something to do with the restaurant and the yakuza and a lot of weird shit. But it was a good case. I actually really liked that one, even if there were a couple hiccups in some of the puzzles. Most of that was probably my fault. I, I, I'll, I'll own up to it. But today is apparently a short case, as I was told last week. Apparently this one's only like one uh, exploration and one uh, trial day long, which is weird, but this is also technically the first Phoenix Wright game with four or five cases in it, so not really sure what the usual pattern is for this type of thing. Because if you remember, uh, the fifth case in Phoenix Wright 1 was a bonus case added for the DS version, so it didn't follow this sort of pattern. But who knows, maybe this is what we'll see... In the future with other Phoenix Wright games. Um, probably, I would imagine with Apollo Justice that might happen a little more. But I've never seen this case. I have no idea what this one's about. I saw the Edgeworth was on the banner for it last time. Although he looked a little different. So I don't know what this is going to be. So I guess someone's like holding these two at gunpoint on a bridge? What the hell's going on here? Is this fucking Metal Gear Solid 3? Is that Big Boss? I don't remember this happening in MGS3. That bridge looked very unstable. Probably wasn't safe to be on there in the first place. Let me see the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive data. Oh man, look at this interface. Name Terry Falls. That's a great last name. <laughs> Very unfortunate. I, he, well, he's not the one that fell off the bridge. That was someone else who fell off the bridge. After escaping, Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. We captured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Wait a second, Hawthorne? We know that name. Very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before me and I ever met. I thought Phoenix didn't know how to use computers. So I guess this time we're going to get to see Mia's first trial. The one that was mentioned back in case number one. So how's this going to go if, if we know that this guy's supposed to be found guilty? Or did he get found innocent and no one liked that? Did they mention if what the outcome of this trial was? I can't remember if they did. I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm gonna die. Never should have accepted this case. Oh, this is this looks great already. What's with that guy's face? Those are some. Do you like smash his face on a barbed wire fence or something trying to escape prison? Uh, good, good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. I didn't do nothing. I swear I didn't kill nobody. Terry Falls, my first client. Sentenced to death five years ago, and now prison escapee. So, you didn't do anything, but you tried to escape prison. That sounds like doing something to me. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Um, so why did you escape anyway? Uh, uh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never, I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Uh, but Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Uh, sorry. I told a little lie. Oh boy. But anyway, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. Um, sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, uh, I, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Sends me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got death penalty. I swear, I didn't kill her. I could never do that. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then about eight hours later, a policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believe that Terry Falls did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true. You did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her. She was alive when I left. 
She was alive. I it's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Hmm. I don't think we've met this guy before. Nah. Seems unlikely. I mean, he certainly doesn't look familiar. At all. You're not gonna figure out the truth just by staring at the guy. Y you're... Why are you here? Came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe you'd like to put someone to play with. Uh, where's Mr. Grossberg? <laughs> that old man's probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me. Diego Armando. I I didn't say... So, Diego Armando, the Ernest er, attorney at Grossberg Law Offices is here for me? No, no, no. You got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine. An escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, uh, th thanks. Sure wish I could get out of it, though. <laughs> Relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned a reputation as a genius since before beginning his law career. Genius? Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Shop in those claws of yours. It's go time. Solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple, childlike voice, I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. What do you mean it's Godot? That's, that's clearly not Godot. He said his name was Diego. That's a different guy, okay? I don't know how you could get something confused like that. Oh man, it's the Canadian judge! Go is not in session for the trial of Terry Falls. Defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. Y y yes Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. So you're the new prosecutor everyone's talking about, eh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, Your Honor. I guess a little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. <laughs> this guy should be in a psych ward, not prison. <laughs> I mean, he apparently escaped prison and then killed a woman. I don't know why he was in prison in the first place. I guess he probably committed some other crime. Sounds like he might have even done more murder. Who knows? I don't know if he should be in psych ward. He was apparently on death row. I'm, I'm surprised he wasn't killed already. Young people are running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, defense attorney in this, defending this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. The defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day that the defendant escaped, the police woman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death. You got it, kitten. Well then, Miss Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was a certain witness's testimony. Isn't that how it usually goes? A witness's testimony? The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim in the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies have fallen and never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That police woman you just mentioned. That wouldn't be... Exactly. 
the victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Aha. I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago. With only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. Ha! Ah, truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. Attention! What? You can't just do that. I'll have you know this guy does not represent Canadians at all. Uh, we would not jump to conclusions like that. W wait a minute, that's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Hmm. Watch yourself, Miss Fay. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Why, you, you're younger than me, you hypocrite. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I called a detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. That's uh, Gumshoe before he had all the pay cuts. A richer and younger Gumshoe. Witness, state your name and occupation. Gumshoe. Dick Gumshoe. I'm an homicide detective in charge of the case, sir. I finally got promoted to detective division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey, ma'am. You got any idea how much work it takes? What is it? You... You're really gorgeous. Excuse me? No, seriously. My heart. It's aching for you. Detective. Pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Uh, uh, okay, I, I got it. Now, Detective, tell us about the incident. Y yes, sir. Right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Yes, sir. I gotcha. Okay. Let's take a look at this area map of the area here. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge. An old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and defendant met there, on top of the bridge. How did the victim get on that side of the bridge? Look how broken it is. Did it, like, break after they crossed it? You know, if that, was, if that happened, if I saw that happen, I'm walking across one of these, I would have, like, booked it off that bridge. There's no way I'm hanging out, especially to point a gun at someone. With the stabbing him in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Hmm. I see. Bridge located 40 feet above Eagle River. Is that 40 feet going to be important later? That's a very specific number to... Say, you could just say it's like located above Eagle River. We know that the victim fell in and died. Or someone did. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valley Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. <laughs> Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hey, Donald, how's it going? Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there is no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honor. If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Why, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm not sure I like you. Wagging your finger at me as though I were some hoser. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Um, yes, sir. Uh... Here we go. Yeah, hang on. Okay. Now listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake, and this guy will drink you for more than tea. Trust me and get ready. So how many cups of coffee do you think this guy's gonna drink? I mean, it's this completely new person that we've never seen before. He seems like a guy who might like his coffee, after all. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed the body into the guard trunk to try and make a getaway. 
Mr. Files was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. 500 cups of coffee? Okay, yeah, he seems like a kind of guy who might drink 500 cups of coffee. He likes to keep himself wired during these cases. Hmm. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. Now, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Coming right up. Hey, hey. Settle down there, kitten. You keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I'm not trembling. It's just cold in here. Cold could be a cold battlefield, all right. Especially for a beginner. I don't need you to worry about me. I mean... I mean, the defendant, the witness. Everyone's a beginner in here. <laughs> You got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got, kitten. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember the, those court procedure videos you stayed up all last night watching. You did five in one day? Five of what? Coffee? Dang. That sounds like a lot of coffee. Most I've ever done was zero. This unknown person. You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who got Sergeant Arthur was the defendant, Derry Falls. W what? The defendant? The defendant called her. Sergeant Arthur was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about a phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, top secret memo that she left in the desk. Confidential police materials written by the victim. Hmm. According to this note, it seems the one who called over to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. <sighs> Whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's that detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said it was that way because the prosecutor told me to. <laughs> Even from the start, Edgeworth is doing that. Was that a trap? That cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. <laughs> a bridge up in the mountains? Who I meet there? Because it is a very important place to defend it, that's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. The place where all of this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge. The very place where Sergeant Arthur arrested and handcuffed Mr. Falls. Turn into the scene of the crime. How nostalgic. Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah, we were really on the ball. We found the criminal within one hour of the murder. It was great. We even got to say, don't move. We got you surrounded. Wait a second. Isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. So how did they find out about the crime so quickly? Sasha and Harthorn must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? Huh. If that's what had happened, then she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call from Mr. Falls, but, uh, She left a note on her desk about it. If only had noticed it earlier. Maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. Can we check that note? Does that mean anything? Let's take a look. February 14th, 1.21 p.m. Falls, 4.30 p.m. at that bridge. Wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Interesting. Mr. Falls had a car then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both rode up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, 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 of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm. Car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. Is this guy ain't sure about how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. 
Yep, that looks like a body. Naturally, it's the body of Valerie Arthorn in there. Whoa, that... That doesn't look too comfortable. Well, it's a good thing they're dead, so they won't, you know, feel uncomfortable. The victim. She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. You can't tell from this photo, but uh, the knife was stuck in the back nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I didn't see anything strange, do you? Anyway. We're gonna press that anyways. I see something that might be strange, but considering that he stole the car, it's probably not strange. What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing. I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, we know he stole a car. This is what he always says, Yana. Then he always says... Ugh. Sorry. I told a little lie. Or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely. That's a dead body I just joined. Yeah, you know. Par for the course for Phoenix Wright. In this case, Mia Fey. Since we're not even playing as Phoenix this time. That certainly is some impressive police work. Well, no, actually, it was way too close for comfort. We set up that checkpoint just after 5 p.m. We figured that Mr. Files might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30 p.m. Did they? Oh yeah, 4.30 p.m. Yep, okay. Message was received at 1.20. Was scheduled to meet at 4.30. Okay. And it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm, that was kind of close. Any later, Mr. Falls could have slipped right by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A trap? Walk into it carelessly, and you might it'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not. Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you'd better get some more information. And if you're going to get caught in a trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. You have a famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. Okay, so what are we dealing with here? So, day of the incident, unknown person phoned the sergeant asked to meet. Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls because that was the unknown person, according to the note. That's where she was brutally murdered. Criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange to you. Okay, so obviously we need to press, or I'm guessing we're going to present the photo. Like, that one's just asking for a presentation. Let's go for it. That's the right one, right? Yep. Objection. No? We're not pressing it? We're not- we're not- we're not presenting the photo when he asks if there's anything strange. Okay. That's fine. Whatever. Ah, <sighs> okay. Alright, ignore that one then. Photo chunk, but I don't see anything strange to you anyway. Okay. Unless there's, like, something, an evidence that contradicts it? So, car was here. I mean, that's fine. I don't think that's gonna show any contradictions. Falls was arrested at least checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. Stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. That's where she was brutally murdered. Okay. So there's got to be something here, right? We already pressed this one, but... I think this might be new. What did the defendants have to say about this photo? Oh, no, it's right. Okay. We already went through this. I'm wondering if maybe one of these we have to press twice. Now that we have more information. I said, please check when we set the base of mountain. So the only thing that's kind of suspicious that I can see right away is this, like, talk to Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. 
I'm thinking maybe one of these has to be pressed again. Yeah, very important place to defend it. Because that's where he kidnapped someone and killed his hostage. So it wasn't discovered, or it was discovered right away. Found the criminal within one hour of the murder. Right, because they, they found him at the, he, they made up the police checkpoint just in time for him to get there, okay. Something weird about that. Location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains, so how did they find out about the crime so quickly? Um, that's a, no, he didn't mention the phone call. Left a note about her desk. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. So maybe we're not supposed to present for a contradiction necessarily, but something a little different. Big trap. Okay. If you want to have any chance, all you better get some more information. If you're going to get caught in a trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. So I'm thinking we don't need to find a contradiction right now. We're just trying to do something else, but what that is, I'm not sure yet. So I went to Dusky Bridge at the same time I met with Mr. Falls. Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge and at the same time I met with Mr. Falls. Okay, so they, they know about it because she, he, she left a note on her desk. I don't see anything strange, do you? Okay, so presenting the photo didn't do anything here. But I'm wondering if presenting something else is important here? What would be strange about this? Because I was thinking this lock was strange, but I mean, again, if he stole the car and he needed to get into the trunk, that seems like something he would have to do, is break the lock. What would, what would this note contradict? Wear white scarf identification. There's no scarf. There we go. Witness! Her first ever objection. What is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I'm sorry, I, I totally forgot what I was going to say. This is... This is the first time I've ever actually had to address someone like that. <sighs> you should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. <laughs> Stay there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still young to be drinking real coffee. What do you mean by drinking real coffee? Does he, is his coffee laced? Do you like, does he have a flask on him or something? Is he drinking in court? Come on, Mia, shake it off. You're a lawyer. Detective. Y yes, ma'am. This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The, the, the note? It fairly clearly states, wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like. Thus, this special request. Yeah, I, um, uh, I have one very simple question for you, Detective. Where's the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, uh, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there. You should have looked for it. The caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I'd expect she did just that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this? I see the defense is a little lacking. The scarf you are searching for so desperately for. Is it this one, perchance? Huh. Well, where did you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. So he withheld evidence from the police. Okay. I mean, that's not like, it's not like we've never done that before. But why, why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. It's the safest place I know. 
<laughs> that odd shot sure is a flare for the dramatic. It's not exactly white as the caller requested, but as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. Hmm, looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising. It was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth, he was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. From day one, no wonder he was accused of cheating in court. The guard will accept the scarf into evidence. Worn by the victim at the time of the incident, found on Dusky Bridge. Now that the attorney for the defense is finished, embarrassing herself. I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is alright with you, isn't it, Miss Hay? Boy, would I like to wrap the scarf around his smarmy little neck. Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business, the prosecution moves to establish conclusively, and with hard evidence, that Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Falls did indeed meet on that bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what occurred there. That sounds quite promising. Can't wait to hear all about it. Everything is moving at his whim. Don't forget, kidding. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. Genius, huh? Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing the scarf, sir. It was drizzling that day. Fortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal showed of the victim down f from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Wait, how did he get behind her? Hmm. Looking at this photo. You really get the sense this bridge is very high up. It's about a 40-foot drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say it was a well-intentioned third party. Ah, a potential witness. So why isn't this person in court? Well, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel them to testify. I'm not sure how I feel about that. You know, I'm liking this judge. He's a little more, uh, he, he's got some brains in him. So as you can see, Terry Falls had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Ah! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. Although he's a little more brash when it comes to jumping to conclusions. Not again. That's not fair. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? I would like to know who this eyewitness is, although I have some theories. Who is this eyewitness? She's a college student. A female college student. That's right. Meaning she's a female and a college student, ma'am. She doesn't do well in front of other people, so I came to testify for her. That's not how that works, I don't think. Maybe so, but as the attorney for the defense, I have the right to cross-examine her. For the time being, we're not relying on the witness's statements. That is all. Come to his suit so it looks so bright and shiny. I wonder if his suit's made of copper, and that's why it turned green later on. Like, there's little flecks of copper in it, and they all oxidized. Like the Statue of Liberty. What's that supposed to mean? That or he, like, fell in some, like, toxic waste barrel or something at some point. Prosecution has other, more decisive evidence. Our case doesn't rest on the vague testimony of a female college student. A female college student, eh? Me sees female and the college student, sir. If you absolutely must hear her testimony, you'll have to give us a good reason why. Please tell us more about the decisive evidence in question. The victim's wearing a scarf in that photo, all right. So, about the witness who took this photo, what was this person doing all the way in the mountains? She was taking photos of wildflowers, apparently. There are many unusual types of flora in that mountain, Miss Fay. People in the area say it's because of the spirits that live there. Spirits? Now that you mention this photo, uh, 
funny fog-like thing. Is it a ghost? I don't believe it. Nah, no, Your Honor. No, I don't think it's a ghost. Drizzling, huh? That's right. There's a light rain coming down. The whole place was dreary. But not as dreary as the mood that's in this courtroom right now. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a cold friend just moved in. In any case... The point is that the area was quite damp. There's even some fog. I even slipped and fell while I was on the bridge. It was really something. Why I didn't fall off. Is that part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is. He pushed the victim out in the back and she fell down right on his stomach. Hmm. I remember that happening once myself. It was really brutal. Are you talking about seeing someone get pushed or were you the one getting pushed? It doesn't mean that you pushed someone down like that once. This mind-boggling tales in the way he said brutal. I wonder if he's Canadian. Save your nasty look for the right person. Huh? Take a look. Poor baby. Court record seems to have wet itself. Hey, watch where you spill your coffee. Court record, huh? Yeah, I have, a, I have an idea where we need to go with this one. <laughs> Talk about surprise. I had no idea there was a photo. So what do I do? You really still believe him? Mr. Crybaby, I mean. Of course I do. Hm. So the little kitten believes in fairy tales, huh? In that case, the answer is obvious. If what you believe is the truth, then that means that somewhere hidden in that testimony is a contradiction. One huge contradiction waiting to be discovered. That's your chance. I forgot to press the last thing, just in... Oh. I want to press the last statement, just in case, but I'm pretty sure I know where we're going. So in other words, there was a struggle between the criminal and the victim, huh? That's what the witness said. Well, it looks like she didn't remember about the scarf. But what, from what she said, it sounded like a pretty violent fight, ma'am. Area is wet from rain. Bridge is probably wet too. Which would explain why the scarf was all covered in mud, but... Something about this testimony that's still bothering me. Okay, I know exactly where we're presenting. Watch this. I don't even know why I'm saving, I'm not confident. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Alright, Colonel shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. And I'm here to tell you... Oh. That's not it at all? Okay, so let me go over my theory here. I'm surprised that's not it. That really seemed obvious, but okay. The reason why I thought that is if you're here, if the killer's here, and the victim is here, how the fuck do you get behind him? It's not like the criminal could have snuck up behind her on the bridge, because that bridge is broken. Nobody's doing that. But apparently, that's not a problem here in this case. Okay, criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. But the scarf is covered in mud. So if they were on the bridge, how is there mud? Maybe this is it? Warned by the victim at the time of the incident, found on Dusky Bridge. No, okay. I guess bridges could be muddy. That's fair. Okay, where else can we try here? Criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Yeah, that makes sense. We have the autopsy, right? Stabbed with a knife in the back, died from blood loss between 4 and 5 p.m. Okay. Drizzling that day, unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Take a look at that photo again. Hmm. Not really anything suspicious in here. I'd call that more than a drizzle, but I doubt we need to call him out on that one. It was accidentally taken by a witness that shows the Vic wearing the scarf, right? Okay. So this one seems semi-relevant. Drizzling that day, unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. 
I feel like this one's off, but I just, I, like, how did he get behind her, is the thing. I'm not really sure how that's possible. Did we want to maybe present the photo, like, to show, like, how the fuck are you going to get behind her? This bridge is narrow. Maybe that's the idea? No? Okay. I mean, it was, it was a likely theory. Guy's a big man. Kind of takes up most of the bridge. It'd be pretty hard to, like, squeeze by her and spin her around. Okay, we'll just load here just in case. Okay, foes accidentally take by the witness, shows the Vic wearing a scarf. Drizzling. Is there anything about the rain that seems suspicious? I mean, are we supposed to call him out saying that's not drizzling, that's fucking pouring? I doubt that's important, though. That seems very unlikely. So the scarf was covered in mud. I mean, I guess the bridge could be muddy. It's a bridge. Lots of foot traffic. Broken or not. Bruno shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Must have been when the scarf fell off. Oh wait, should I put... Did I try presenting on this one? Oh, I don't know if I did, but I did now. I thought maybe that would be the ones like, no, that could have been when a scarf fell off because it's covered in mud. But no. Well, we know she was wearing the scarf, so that's definitely not it. I'm gonna shut the victim down from behind. It's drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. I mean... It looks pretty clear to see what here. Like, it doesn't look that foggy. Is that the contradiction? That it's actually easy to see things after all? Colonel shoved the victim down from behind, stabbed her in the back. Like, I just, I, I'm trying to picture how that would work. Okay, I win as this one's useless. I don't think we need to worry about that one. Photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It was accidentally taken. I mean, it's not like we have any evidence of that. Like, I guess she could have taken it from, like, here or something. That kind of makes sense. I don't any of these have, uh, like, double presses that we have to do. So, person who's doing the mountains, she's taking photos of wildflowers, okay. So, it's drizzling, unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Are we. Is that possibly it that's actually really clear? No. I guess it was hard to see what was going on after all. Fortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Okay, well, considering the evidence that we have here, I don't think this is going to be relevant, and I don't think this is relevant considering we just used it. This could be relevant. But if it's not because of, like, the fact the bridge is broken and there's no way to get across and it's narrow and all of that stuff... I don't think it's... it doesn't seem like it could be relevant because any reason that I thought of it being relevant for is apparently irrelevant. Criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. This is the only one that sticks out to me. The issue... is I don't know what we could present that would make sense. Like, we know about the stains, that's from dirt. Uh, apparently there's a big stab wound on the back that we just can't see in this photo, so... I mean, whatever. Nothing wrong there, we'll take his word for it. 
Stabbed with a knife in the back, died from blood loss between four and five. Okay. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Hmm. It's either this one or this one that's in, that's important. All right, a victim time instant found on Dusky Bridge. Okay, we already tried the scarf there. So there sounds like there might have been a struggle, but this could have just been taken before any confrontation actually happened. We don't know. This is just the car, so that's like whatever. I mean, if she fell on down onto her front on the bridge, it doesn't look like she got dirty. If the scarf is dirty, well, wait. Okay, hang on. Is that maybe it? Kuno shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. If she shoved her down and the scarf is muddy, why is she clean? Addiction! That actually was it. Is that actually the reason? So at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Yeah, and fog too. Just a generally soggy atmosphere. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the soggy atmosphere. This is the photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk. Considering the conditions at the scene of the crime, something isn't right. Is it really that? Was it because she's not muddy? Well, by all means, please enlighten us as to what isn't right. What isn't right about this photo? Uh, do we want to click on her suit, maybe? I mean, that was my guess, was that, like, if she was shoved down onto the bridge, her scarf got muddy, but she didn't. Naturally, the answer is right here. The victim's coat? As far as I can see, there's nothing strange about it. That's exactly what's strange. Recall the testimony. What were the conditions on the bridge that day? It was drizzling and foggy. Dusky Bridge was all wet. If the victim really had fallen down on her stomach on top of the bridge... And the front of the coat should have been covered in mud. That... that's exactly right. The other day I fell on the muddy street and my gorgeous play off beard was befouled. No one in Canada says befouled. Where the fuck is this guy from? I assure you we don't use that word. Play off beard. I'm sure some people have that though. I do admit the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean that the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honor had fallen in the shower instead of on a muddy street, your glorious hockey beard pride of the legal league would be wet, not muddy. Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, the point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? Surface of the bridge, huh? <laughs> a real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. Neither would a real woman. Of course I can. Here's the evidence that proves that the surface of the bridge was muddy. The evidence is... this scarf. Ugh. Should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, it means that the bridge was obviously covered in mud. No. Can't be outwitted by this novice bimbo. Hey, same to you, buddy. Oh, Edgeworth was a rambunctious young prosecution lawyer if he's using words like bimbo. This phase insertion makes perfect sense to me. I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction between the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is, why is there a contradiction? Huh? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at what the explanation in this case may be, shall we? All right. It's not like he's really giving me a choice here. <laughs> You're doing pretty well. Poor little kitten. M Mr. Armando. No matter what he says, contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk. The witness's photo showing the defendant and the victim. Or the witness's testimony that stated she saw the moment of the murder. 
Just relax and think it over. It's pretty simple, isn't it? False evidence. It's one of those three. Are you telling me Edrith might have planted evidence? No. Hmm. What you just said just now. I'm not sure I like that. But that wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the coffee aficionado over there that said it. His guard is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Blame it on him, Your Honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his evidence as the flimsy scam it really is. Y yes. The false evidence in this case is the... Uh, what is his testimony? Body in a trunk. Ooh. Wait, is this photo? No. Why would... What, what would be fake about that? They just, like, had a watering can in front of the camera? I mean, she was picking flowers. Maybe she was watering them, too. Could have just made it look like it was raining. Body in the trunk? Probably this one. Let's save here. Witnesses' testimony. I don't think we have enough evidence to prove that the witness's testimony is... Well... Actually... Yeah, you know what? It could be the witness's testimony. How would it be the body, right? Like, how would he have faked the body? It's gotta be the testimony. She wasn't shoved over. It's a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, it's what the witness told us. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Hmm, that's true. <laughs> Such is true. It's the truth. If there's truly a decisive witness in this case, I'm certain that boy Wonder over there would have called them in the first place. So they made up the entire witness as a fake character. Then who took the picture? That picture looked very real. Your Honor, the defense requests to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. Well, Miss Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. <sighs> you should brace yourself. For the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of holding the witness for hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well. Please bring forth your witness at this time. I thought you just said the witness didn't want to testify. And now you're saying they're prepared to testify? What Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? Turns out the witness was actually the victim. And the victim isn't dead. Now let's proceed with the testimony. Miss Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Witness, what is your name and occupation? Oh, it's you again. This piece of shit. Everyone is so silent I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter. Hmm. Oh. When I look at you, how can I put it? You look as scrumptious as a double-double and a dozen donut holes. I feel like I want to hurry up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite. Who the fuck wrote this dialogue? Like, did they get an actual Canadian on the team just to write this judge's dialogue? Because that was, like, easily the most Canadian line I've read so far. Hey, hey, not so fast. <sighs> as I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I want to ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You are a true gentleman. Miss Faye, you can learn a lot from this man. He's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one of me. Um, sir? Hmm? Uh, yes, my dear? This is my first time, so I'm sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just want to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. 
Hmm. Not at all. So trouble at all. Now then, may we please have your name and occupation? My name is, um, Melissa Foster. I'm a college student, uh, a freshman in the literature department. You were on the scene when that unfortunate event occurred, correct? And you were the one who took this photo? Is that accurate? Uh, how could you be so mean? Now see here, what are you doing shoving that in her face like that? Huh? But it's just a photograph, it's not like it's something dangerous. I, what, what do you know about photographs? They're printed on paper. Paper is very sharp and dangerous. Next time we force to penalize you. Uh oh, I don't like the turn this has taken. She staring at me. Um, and you would be... Huh? I'm the defense attorney. My name is Mia Faye. I see. So you are... Now then, young lady, could you please give us your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. I'll do my best. Ah, uh, I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Then, I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly, they just started fighting. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. The crucial moment of them standing at like 12 paces, ready to draw pistols, and not fighting at all. And right after that, I called the police. Hmm. By the way, where were you standing when the incident occurred? I believe the map would be of help here. Um, I was standing right over here. And how the fuck did you take that photo then if you were standing over here? See, I thought she was standing here. That would have made perfect sense. I was standing in a beautiful field surrounded by tall cliffs. Yeah, there's a lot of bullshit with this testimony. So you took the photo from that location, eh? I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Edgeworth asked me to. <laughs> what a cute camera, just like its owner. Melissa Foster took this witness's photo with this... A small but powerful model. All right then, Miss Faye. Time for your cross-examination. But I warn you, make the witness cry again and you'll feel the wrath of I Gavel. How true is that? Like, are we allowed to press here? I'm gonna save just in case. The last couple of cases it had, like, multiple sections where you can only press once. Did you say wildflowers? Yes, the mountain is famous for its beautiful spring wildflowers. Um, but it's only February. Well, I, I couldn't wait for spring to come. It doesn't make the flowers grow any faster, okay? They don't work on your schedule. <laughs> I know just how you feel. It's just like when I first started growing this glorious beard of mine. I just couldn't wait, so I wore a dyed blonde Santa beard until mine grew bright and properly. Would you mind if we get back to the facts of the case, Your Honor? Is there anything strange about the two of them? I... I'm a bad girl. I... I know I am. It looked like they were having a really serious conversation up there. So I decided to watch them. Like some kind of peeping Tom. No, not at all. Everyone is like that. I love watching other people fight, too. In fact, I can't get enough of it. Actually... That's why I took this job in the first place. Too much info, Your Honor. I mean, he said he was a hockey fan. That's pretty normal. In any case, it's perfectly natural for you to have kept watching them. Especially dressed as they were. Well, anyway, I was watching them very closely. Do you have any idea what they were fighting about? Eh? Uh, no, I, I have no idea. Why do you ask that? Oh, I just thought that. Maybe you overheard what they said. I'll take that as a no. I would never, never eavesdrop. I've got more class than that. That's right, Miss Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level. <sighs> Why did you take a photo? 
Well, the two of them were really going at it. Ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a news reporter. I guess that part of me just kind of took over. It smells like a lie to me. Yes, I understand completely. Even now, I can't completely abandon my boyhood dreams. I still use my grandson to test my comedy routines on. So you wanted to be a comedian, huh? Not that there's any bearing on this. All I could do was use my camera. So I took the photo of the crucial moment and gave it to the police. You called the police? Yes, because it looked to me like the murderer was going to try and escape. We were already moving before the call even came in. Thanks to the victim's note, we had already started our operation. Hmm. That was certainly tough luck for the criminal, eh? Terry Falls isn't the criminal. And there must be something strange in that girl's testimony. Be careful, kitten. That girl has the judge wrapped around her little finger. You're gonna have a tough time poking holes in that testimony of hers. You're gonna have to come up with something really good, Mia. Okay, I have a few theories here about where we're going with this. I mean, there's a number of things that seem questionable in this testimony. First of all, where her she was said she was located. I mean, that alone is pretty suspicious. Like, she said she was standing over here, behind the cliff. The picture looks like it was taken around here. Because if she was able to take a picture, she would have probably most likely taken a picture of this section. So her entire photo is completely impossible from that location. The other thing... So they start fighting, and she took the photo that shows a crucial moment. Her photo... Maybe this is just my opinion. This doesn't look like two people fighting. This looks like two people standing on a bridge. So we get a couple of places we can go with here. So I'm thinking... I don't know if we can, like... Is there one of these... That kind of, like, uh, the press is where she said she took, uh, said where she was standing, so I'm not sure if we can really present on that. So that's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. I'm gonna try this one because this clearly doesn't look like the crucial moment. Attention! Witness, when you said you took a photo of the crucial moment, is this what you meant? Um. All I can see in this photo are two people facing each other. You testified that you saw the two of them starting to fight. Normally, that's the kind of thing we would refer to as a crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? Well, you see... The photo we presented was only the only one there was. But if you really wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happened next? You must have taken a photo of it. Hmm. Hmm. So... Um, uh, my apologies, young lady, but Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. He can certainly downplay his situation, can't he? Well, he is Canadian. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm a very bad girl. I, um, I used it all up. The, the film, I mean. You ran out of film? Uh, this photo was the last one. What? Unfortunately, that is the truth. I personally examined all of the photographs she took that day. All the other photos are of the witness herself. Truth, <laughs> you should just yell at her trust. I don't know if he's, uh, he, this is his first case, okay? You gotta, you gotta come some slack here. He too is also new to this whole thing. The witness herself? Then who took the photos? Well, you see, my camera has a timer feature built into it. So you took photos of yourself. Hmm. I remember taking some photos of myself once, too. Please, no details. I... I like to think here that Mia is the one that's got the, uh, the, the one-track mind. Maybe she should get her mind out of the gutter. Seems that Miss Faye's assertion was not so decisive after all. Wait. Just, just a minute. Well, if she has no film left, she couldn't very well take more pictures, eh? Miss Foster, perhaps then you could tell us about a different sort of photo. Photos of the incident that you took with your very own eyes. Mr. Edgeworth, you're quite the poet. Very well then. Let's get back to the cross-examination. 
What are your thoughts on the fight that you witnessed? Yes, Mr. Judge. Boy, this guy is really a sucker for sweet talk. <laughs> Looks like the other kitten in this room is the one that's getting all the attention. Yeah, it's sickening. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Okay, so where is this new one? The victim tried to turn around and run away, but she only got about 10 yards before she was stabbed in the back. Okay, that contradicts Gumshoe's statement about how she got stabbed on the bridge because... I mean, I've never been good at measuring distances with uh, those map scales, but if we take a look at this... If this is, like, a five-yard distance, we try and, like, match that up here. Well... It's, it's, it's close. It goes from about here to here. So it's, like, basically the length of the intact part of the bridge. So I guess one could argue that maybe she could have still been stabbed and knocked over on the bridge, but, I mean, we already proved that that part of the testimony was, was fake. Because uh, she wasn't dirty in the trunk. Okay, let's push some of these here. Do you have any idea what they were fighting about? Eh? No, I, I have no idea. Why do you ask that? Oh, I just thought that maybe you overheard what they said. Oh, we already did this one. Okay. Make them turn around and try to run away. The victim, why do you think she tried to run away? Um, with her police training, she certainly knew better than to turn her back on a criminal. Oh wait, I know exactly what we're, we're presenting. It should be obvious by this point. This was a large, powerful man with a knife. If it had been a quaggy woman like you, I'm sure she would have acted differently. Quaggy? Why you? What does that even mean? If it had been me, I probably would have jumped into the river. There's still something wrong with this testimony. So you're saying Sergeant Hawthorne wasn't able to get away from him? Well, it's a narrow bridge and it was swaying back and forth. If you ask me, both of them were in danger of falling off. I only wish I could have done something to help her. Hmm, that does seem to make sense. I wonder about that. Something seems kind of off. <laughs> Does it now? You have a good sixth sense. When you feel that something's off, that's when you need to figure out why. Terry Falls isn't the criminal. And there must be something strange in that girl's testimony. Right. Okay, well, I know where we're going with this one. Start fighting. The victim turned around and tried to run away. I like to think that that's probably impossible. It just occurred to me why that would be impossible. Witness. Your testimony's a joke. What? But, but I... I just... Miss Faye, I warned you not to make the witness cry. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there were two contradictions? It's simple. Just take a look at the diagram of the area. According to her testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if they were, and the victim had turned around and tried to run, well then, she would have hit a dead end. He said 10 yards, but she couldn't have even ran five because Dusky Bridge has collapsed on that side. What does this all mean? It's very simple, Your Honor. This charming little witness told a charming little lie. That's all there is to it. This beautiful young lady has been lying to the court. Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. W what do you mean? There's one major mistake in this diagram. What do you mean there's a major mistake in this diagram? What are you referring to? It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. Oh, okay. It's a very old bridge. We couldn't find any official blueprints of it. S so you're saying... I'm saying that even though this bridge is currently in disrepair... There's no evidence that, that can prove that the bridge was broken during the incident. 
You can't actually tell from the condition of the bridge from this photo. I apologize to the court for not being more clear when I presented the evidence. Hmm. <laughs> that guy is good. Huh? What do you mean? You planned it from the beginning. He's a genius, all right. That diagram of the bridge was his insurance policy. What? That coward. Well, Miss Faye, seems you've once again made a reckless accusation. I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful myself. No, 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 no. It wasn't your fault at all. Now then, shall we go on with the trial? I'd like to establish once and for all what it was that the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. May I ask you to please proceed with your testimony? But I... it's so hard to go on. Well, in your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Just tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. Then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could have made sure the body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. So is that speculation or uh, something that you saw? Hmm. Witnessing such violence must have been difficult. Yes, sir. I'm s still shaken up. Except his testimony as is. We're finished. Don't say that. Oh, well. Maybe I'll stop off at my favorite cafe on the way home. They make a really great mocha latte. The trial isn't over yet. Huh. That's what I like to hear. All right, Miss Faye. Your cross-examination, if you please. Contradiction is starting to you right in the face, Mia. Go on the attack. All right, we'll just quickly save here. Ah, go back. There we go. All right, let's start pressing. Are you saying that the victim didn't fall down on the bridge? Um, actually, maybe she did. Of course she didn't fall on the bridge. If she had fallen down, this photo wouldn't make any sense. Of course, because that's what we established earlier, earlier, right? If that was the case, her code would have been all muddy. If you don't mind, I was asking the witness. Uh, no need to be so rude. Well, young lady. Of course she didn't fall down. The man in the prison uniform grabbed her before she could. One step too slow. And then what did the defendant do after that? I'm waiting for her, like, location to become evidence because I feel like her very location should make half of the stuff that she's witnessing near impossible. You personally witnessed that? Y yes. Did anything strange happen when he did that? Well, I, I don't know if you'd call it strange or not, but that's when the victim's scarf fell off. Hmm. You mean this scarf? The words match what we found at the scene. I don't see any problem. You mean the defendant carried the body all by himself? Y yes. Considering the size of the defendant, I don't think it would be difficult. Yes, but let's remember they were on a narrow bridge that was ready to collapse. Is it even possible for him to carry a dead body on a bridge like that? Well, the fact of the matter is that he did. That kind of talk is just silly. That doesn't seem like you, Edgeworth. Wow, why did he get so emotional all of a sudden? Miss Faye, if you think there's some other possibility, please share it with the rest of us. Okay, is that probably the one we want to present then? Why do you say that? It's already a broken down bridge hidden away in the mountains. Doing anything more to hide the corpse would be going overboard, wouldn't it? Yes, but that mountain is famous among hikers. Surprising number of people go up there. But it's February, right? And it was raining that day, correct? There's also a small temple in a channeling dojo there. You know those monks. They just love cold, isolated places. I think the witness is trying to say that the corpse could have been found at any time. 
Besides, the witness is merely reporting what she witnessed with her own eyes. And you're absolutely certain that it was my client who was carrying the body? Well, he was wearing a prisoner's uniform, but as for his face... So you're saying you didn't get a clear look at his face? Well, they were far away and it was raining as well. I thought I was only supposed to say exactly what I saw. Excellent. You're a remarkably honest young woman. Something about this testimony is bothering me, but what? Hey, kitten. Have you ever put salt in your coffee? No, why would I? Why not? Huh? It may actually go better with coffee than sugar, right? Listen, the point is, if you're not sure, you might as well add a ton of salt to it. You might bring out the rust in something, like a piece of evidence. He's right, Mia. Go present something. You've got nothing to lose. Except, you know, possibly getting thrown out of court and losing the case, but hey, it's the details. By the way, I wouldn't put salt in my coffee. The two don't go well after all. Okay, so what exactly are we doing here? Because I, I wish we could present her her position as evidence, but I don't think we can. Right? She's not she's not anywhere on there. So that's just not an option. Melissa Foster took the witness's photo with this, has a timer function. That's probably gonna be important, but doesn't seem like it's important now. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. Hang on a second. No? Oh. Okay, I thought for sure that was gonna be it because I thought his arms were full. He has that ball and chain around him. And I don't mean a person. I mean a literal ball and chain. How is he carrying a person and the ball and chain? That just doesn't seem possible. He's not gonna let it drag. Because he's not going anywhere if he does that. Damn, I thought that was, like, perfect. I thought that was gonna be it for sure. Okay, after he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked up his arms and he carried her over to the car. Maybe this is the one? Maybe I just picked the wrong one. No! Ugh. Okay, that seemed like a really good one. I know we've been using that image a lot, but, like... That doesn't mean anything. Like, how, okay, how do you carry a person like that and also a giant heavy ball and chain? Like, look at that! He's gotta use both hands for that thing! Even in courtier, he has to keep it held at all times. And you're telling me that he carried a person at the same time? I don't believe it. Could just leave the body on top of the bridge. Okay. So, okay, so it's not the, it's not the, the photo for sure, I would say. So, carried her to the car. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms, carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body was hidden. Could just leave the body on top of the bridge. Why not just toss the body into the river? Like, surely that would have kept the body hidden, right? Only supposed to talk about what I saw. Okay, so the only photo that she took with this was the one that we already have, because that was the last uh, bit on her film. She didn't have any more film left after that, so fine. What else we have here? Couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Why couldn't he leave the body on top of the bridge? Because, like, it looks like he probably could have. If the bridge was breaking apart because of... Well, we don't have any proof that it was breaking apart. Bridge is wobbling and everything. This one seems weird. This is a, a weird statement. Okay, this one still like makes me suspicious because again, how do you how do you carry both? 
Sam in the back quickly picked her up in his arms before she fell over and got muddy. Carried her over to the car. Okay. So, was the car already open then? Was the trunk ready to go? Like he was intending to dump the body in it? I'm wondering if we need to, like, bring up her position with this, even though it's not actually on there. No. I don't think it's going to be any person. I, so far, I've had no reason to present a person yet. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. Wait, no, there's another way. Now we present this. Eagle River, right? Yeah, there we go. If you'll recall back to Edgeworth's, uh, the prosecution's statement, a body that falls in the river would be pretty hard to find. Killer not wanting his victim to be found. I can understand that. However, the idea of moving the body for that purpose is clearly odd. There was a much easier way to make sure the body wasn't found. Well... What is it? Take another look at the map of the area and you'll see how. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier, Mr. Edgeworth pointed out something interesting about the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. Ah. In a kidnapping case five years ago, the victim's body was carried away and never found. If ten murders were to occur at that same spot above Eagle River, you can bet your boots that every other killer would have tossed the body in the water. Order. Order, order. I'm not sure if I care for the way you put that, Miss Fay. But I must admit it does seem odd not to have thrown the body in the river. Well, Miss Edgeworth. How sad. Perhaps Miss Fay would do well to try taking a dip in the river herself. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. You're the one who claimed it! What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method of body disposal, the fact is that this is what the killer did. None of your arguments have anything to do with what the witness saw. Hmm, quite true. Miss Faye, it seems your assertion is without merit after all. the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous. Surely you can't deny that the body was found in the trunk of the car. That's certainly consistent with what the witness has told us. <sighs> Please, witness, go on with your testimony. I'll try. All you have to do is tell us what you saw. Otherwise, the mean lady might yell at you again. Who is he talking about? All right, I'll do my best. My god, how many testimonies are there? Okay, quickly picked her up, carried her over to the car. Killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hit the body there. Okay, well, we know that's true because the lock looks very busted. What did the man do then? Well, naturally he got in the car and was about to flee. That's, that's when I came to my senses. I said to myself, you have to call the police. And so that's when you call the police. You sure that you saw that with your own eyes? Yes, I'm 100% certain. Why do you say that? It's already a broken down bridge hidden away in the mountains. Okay, no, I already did this one. Couldn't remember if this was new or not. It's weird, because this is just like... So far, this has only been appending to testimony and not like making a new testimony. But I guess it's only like the one line... Killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body there. It's the only new piece of line. So, I mean, you'd think I'd have to present it, right? But with what? Like, yeah, he did have to break into it. Because, like, if you look at the car... I mean, that look, lock looks very broken up there. I don't know how else you'd describe that. 
Like, the guy stole the car. He didn't have the keys. Obviously, he would have had to break into the lock. Or into the trunk. When do we have to present her location? Because I don't see how she could have seen it. Because hey, look at this. She claims to have been over here, behind this cliff. Car is there. How the fuck did you see her put the him put the body in the in the trunk of the car? Like, how have we not blown this witness's testimony wide open with that fact? Hey, there's nothing else new here, right? Uh, scarf fell off when he carried. Okay, that's fine. Again, how did you see any of this? But I don't think we're there yet. Unless we're supposed to now bring it up that she couldn't have seen this. Uh, yeah. Okay, couldn't get see the face. That's fine. It was also far away and raining. I'm supposed to say exactly what I saw. I don't think she said anything that she saw. It's, it sounds impossible. Okay. Maybe we're just going to do it anyways. Maybe that's what we need to do. No, okay. I don't know what other evidence we could present to, like, say that, hey, you couldn't have seen any of this based on what you said earlier. But that, that if that's not what we're doing yet, then I guess not. Only supposed to talk about what I saw. That one still stands out. I mean, this one's the new one here. I'm not sure what we could do for that. When is this photo? Killer broke into a chunk of the stolen car and hid the body there. I mean, it looks like he did break into it. Are we suspicious of the order of operations? Because, like, so he kills the victim, picks her up. How does he open the trunk while his hands are full of body? Right? Because, like, he has to still break into it. Does he smash the body against the, the lock to break it open? Because, like, he would have had to have opened the trunk beforehand, right? Like, this was a, would have been premeditated. It's the only way it could have really worked, because he needed... He would have had to prepare the trunk, get it open, and be like, Yeah, I'm gonna go kill her and stuff the body in here. Carried over to the car... Stabbed her in the back, quickly picked her up, carried her over to the car, killed her, broke into the trunk of the stolen car, and hid the body there. Okay, well, it doesn't say that she... That she is not saying that he did it afterwards. She's just saying that he did at some point do that, so... Maybe he did do it beforehand. Hmm... Is there anything else here that's weird? Not really. Like, I mean, it really looks like he smashed that lock. Seems quite possible. Carried over to the car. Stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. I wonder if, like, I was onto something with the whole how did you carry the body thing. Do we want to present something here? Like, is there anything mentioning his ball and chain? Is that even relevant? I mean, it's in every one of his photos. How do you carry a person with that in your hands? You can't just put it down, it's not gonna... It, that's gonna be very annoying. Killer broke into the car, chucked the stolen car, and hit the body there. Are we still, like, gonna go on about how the body is clean? Like, how did he put the body down without dirtying it? Maybe the back of the body is clean. You know what? I'm just gonna present... No, okay. That wasn't it.
I was thinking like maybe it's something about how the, it was dirty, but I guess not. Could just leave the body on top of the bridge. Well, no, he couldn't have. Like, like again, he could have just... Could he not have like tossed the body into the river? Yeah, no, this is all just like there's there's a lot of potential people who could have find found the body. Only supposed to talk about what I saw. This though, this seems suspicious. So he didn't get a clear look at his face, which is kind of a problem. They're far away and it was raining as well. Uh, I thought I was only supposed to say exactly what I saw. Right. Is this where we present the camera? Because it's like, ah, you didn't see this, your camera saw this. Like, maybe? Because their camera is the one that took the picture of them not fighting. Right? And also that timer function is kind of suspicious too, because the timer could have been like, oh, maybe she didn't see any of this because the timer went off when she took the picture. And then she just made up the rest of the testimony around it. And we know for a fact that stabbed her in the back, quickly picked her up in his arms. Okay. That's fine. I mean, that lines up with the autopsy. Okay, how did do you know that the killer did this? Like, okay, did I pre I presented this already, right? I think I did. Oh, then I didn't do that. Okay, good thing I tried again, because I would have thought I did. Well, Miss Foster, it looks like you've done it this time. Is this now we're finally going to get into her location and how she could have seen this? D done what? Made a crucial mistake. A crucial mistake? Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the car stolen car and hid the body there. You're saying you saw that, right? With your very own eyes? Y yes uh, And? It's simple, Miss Foster. Take a look at the diagram. Yeah, we're getting to her location, right? The place you claim to have taken the photo from that day is here. Do you see what I mean? Even if you tried to see the car, this outcropping of rock is directly in the way. That's right, Miss Foster. From where you're standing, you could not have possibly seen the killer's car. I admit that the diagram shows a large, out large outcropping of rock. However, it isn't so tall that it would stop her from seeing the car. That's right. It's not high at all. I was able to see his car just fine. I'm so sorry, but that just doesn't wash. I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the court, yes? This is the location from where the photo was taken. Your own photo tells the whole story. You can clearly see the left side of the bridge. But the outcropping that is being referred to is really more like a cliff. Your view should have been completely cut off by this cliff. But you still claim to have been able to see the killer's car. The order! Order in the court! What is the meaning of all this ballyhoo? Who the fuck says ballyhoo? Ballyhoo? That's not a Canadian word! Your Honor. Don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact that the escapee fled into a stolen car was reported on the news. After witnessing a murder, I'm sure you can appreciate that the witness was very upset. Yeah, but like, okay, fine, she knew it was stolen, but how did you see him break into the trunk? How did you know the body was in the trunk, huh? It is now. So saith the judge. I, okay, new word. I guess I'll just add it to my vocabulary. I guess I'm the fake Canadian here. She must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself that she saw it. 
Oh yeah, she has convinced herself, like every other witness we've ever interviewed on this game. But she was repeatedly warned before starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her own eyes. Hmm. Oh. Uh, uh, Mr. Judge? What is it? I think, I think I must have remembered things wrong. Oh, really? Hey, wait a minute. You can't just say that. Miss Faye, no one on the face of the planet is perfect. Mm. Yes, indeed. Quite true. You know what they say. Terra's human. To forgive, divine. I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here. This is a court of law. You know what we do to people who, who lie in court? Intentionally or otherwise? It's called perjury. They get arrested. What the hell's wrong with this judge? What? That's not fair. Save the tears for later, kitten. M Mr. Armando! Don't look back until the trial is over. Now's the time to go forward. But... but that wasn't fair. Okay, kitten. You need to relax. Then you need to remember. The other kitten's testimony. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body there. So tell me, how did she know that? How did she know that he broke into the trunk? Ah. Huh. Well, Miss Foster, until you can explain how you knew that, you're going to have a lot of very suspicious people on this side of the courtroom. Well, witness? Well, I'm certain that he broke into the trunk because... because there are marks left on the trunk lid. I'm certain they were scratch marks from when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. That's true. They certainly look like scratch marks around the keyhole. Hmm. It's obvious that this trunk has been broken open. Well, Miss Faye, are you satisfied? Judge is on her side. Can't make any mistakes here. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's the contradiction of her position, but are we over that, or are we still going on about her position? Did she actually see him break into the trunk, or is she just assuming that he broke into the trunk? Based on, like, the evidence that she's seen in court. I think we have to call it out. Melissa Foster, it looks like you finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in a field taking photos of wildflowers, but even so, you knew about the scratches. Question is when? When did you get a chance to see those scratches? Finally. I finally got her. Huh. I'm getting pretty tired of waiting over here. Then perhaps it'd be faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Your Honor, there's only one possible explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was... She put the corpse in herself. She's the owner of the car? Ooh. Maybe? That could be it, honestly. Let's go with that. I, there's there's a re there's precedence to why this could be true. Because the stolen car actually belonged to her. That is why she knew about the scratches. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Frankly, Your Honor, after hearing a pathetic response like that, I have to question whether or not such a pathetic lawyer should even exist. Did you hear that, Miss Faye? I believe Miss Edgeworth just called you a knucklehead. Yeesh, isn't that overdoing things a little bit? Okay, that was, that was worth it for that line. Okay. The reason Witness had seen the scratches was... I mean, she could have just been passing by. <laughs> Are we gonna, like, just jump to the conclusion she's an accomplice? <laughs> no way! I mean, that would be on brand. But why would we do that? I don't think she would have done it. They're gonna go on about how she's too small and frail to be picking up a body. She must have been passing by. I swear if it's that middle option. 
because she just happened to be passing by the area where the car was parked. No. Okay. She actually did put it in. We're, we're really going there. I, you know what? I should have known by this point. I should have known by this point that this is what we do. Is like when given the opportunity to accuse a witness of a crime, we take it. Anything to move the blame off of our defendant. And just blame the witness. I guess I'm too nice to these witnesses. There's only one way the witness had the chance to see those scratches. Y yes? What is it? Naturally. When she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in herself. Unless this is also wrong and we were supposed to pick the other option. The person who really hid the body in the trunk of that car was... Melissa Foster. It was you that did it, wasn't it? I mean, someone had to hold the body upright while he cracked open the lock, right? It's ridiculous. I could never... I mean, it would be the first time that she did it. Wait, wasn't there some mention of this? No. No, that was something else. That was the poison case. That was later. I'm thinking of that part. I don't think... Yeah, it's not because of this. It was the man in the prison car. He, he's not the one that... I don't think so, Miss Foster. If Mr. Falls had been the one that put the corpse in the trunk... He would have simply used the car key. There was no need to break it over. Well, who said he had the car key? Oh, actually, you know what? Oh, yeah, that's right. He would have had the car key. I didn't even think of that. He would have had the car key because he stole the car at a red light while someone else was already driving it. So, yes, he would have had the car key. So, wait, why did she put the body in the trunk then? <laughs> if she's working with it, why did he just grab the car key and open it for her? But he stole the car. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Which means that the key would have still been in the ignition. I, yeah, that part just completely slipped my mind. That makes perfect sense. Oh, I, I see. Thank you for telling us about the scratches, Miss Foster. Without that, we would have never uncovered the truth. That it couldn't have been Mr. Falls that put the body in the trunk. Which means that maybe he didn't kill her. Postress. Do you think that the witness put the body in there? If that were true, then how do you explain the photo that she took? The corpse could only have been put in the trunk when the incident occurred. And we already know that at the time. She was taking photographs. How's your chance, Mia? Finish this thing. On the contrary, I'm not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. There's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is the shutter for this may not have been pushed by Miss Foster herself. Let's take another look at this camera and see what features it has, shall we? It has a timer built into it, even a mini tripod. Hmm. Why, it's almost as if she had brought this camera just to take the picture. What are you trying to say then, Miss Faye? That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field as she claimed? Well, she really did use the camera's auto timer. Then the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. How long was the timer? Usually a timer only goes for like, what, maybe 10 seconds at most? Not like three minutes. Like how long would it have taken for her to run all the way back around to the parking lot in front of the bridge? Exactly, she was not in the field. Hmm, would the defense please explain further? Listen, this is a crucial point. Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? In answering that question, we'll also make clear Miss Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer this question. Where was Miss Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? Uh, where does it want me to click? Because, I mean, obviously it's going to be somewhere in here, right? Because, like... Maybe in the bushes? <laughs> I mean, she couldn't have been here. She, she would have had to have been, like, all the way over here, right? Or was she over here? Because Edgeworth said earlier that this bridge may not have been broken. Hmm. Was she by the car waiting for the victim to be killed? Or was she on this side? <laughs> you 
You know what? I'm gonna pick here. Naturally, the witness was standing right here. Hmm. Well, what do you think, Miss Edgeworth? I guess she wasn't standing there. Before pointing out where the witness was standing, Miss Faye should do something herself. She should figure out where she stands if she catch my drift. Oh, don't worry. The drift was certainly caught. Uh, okay. I guess it's by the car. I mean... I was thinking, like, I don't know, maybe... Maybe she caught the body and then, like, took it to the car on the way over. But we don't know if the bridge was in or out, so I'm just going to pick, like... Maybe over here, I in the bushes or something. No? Okay. Did I misread the prompt? I mean, I saved somewhere around here, I think. Or did I save a couple questions back? I, it's not that far back. I think I, like, was a couple questions back just in case I screwed up somewhere. Not that, not that you can, like, permanently screw up. I don't think you can softlock yourself. Yeah, we're back here. That's fine. It's not that long, actually. Okay, so she put the corpse in herself somehow. We just have to figure out where exactly she's standing. And I'm not sure if this is, like, going to be pixel perfect like it is sometimes with these things, or if there's more to it. Okay. There was, there was a very good reason why I thought she was on the other side of the bridge, but... Uh, okay. Let me think too deeply about what I'm saying is the sheriff for this may not have been pushed by Miss Foster herself. Yep, so we present the camera. Save. Well, shit. Okay. Where could she have been standing? So, we know the camera took the picture from around here. Because this cliff is here, so it would have taken the picture right about here. So, if she set up the camera, it was on a timer, and then she was literally anywhere else. It couldn't have been over here, now that I think about it, because then she would have had to, like, run through them. Unless there's, like, a hidden bridge that we don't know about, but that's stupid. That's not gonna be it. She would have been... What if she was in the car? But then, that would raise many questions like, okay, did this guy kill, kidnap a, a, her as well? Like, our client kidnapped someone? That's not gonna be good for a client, but I mean... She must have been by the car, right? Right here, I think. Hmm. The spot where the defendant's car was. Yes. She had to put the body in the trunk before the defendant returned. You don't mind if I ask one teeny, teeny weeny question, do you, Miss Faye? Uh-oh. He's got that kind of insane tone in his voice. If she put the body in the trunk at the time, as you suggest, that must mean that Valerie Hawthorne was already dead at that point, correct? Hmm. Indeed. Please take a look at the top of Dusky Bridge. She doesn't look dead. It certainly looks to me like the victim is still alive, am I mistaken? Uh... If Ali Hawthorne was already dead, then... Who is this? The mountain is famous for spirits, so maybe you think it was the ghost of the victim? Yeah, actually, okay, wait, if she was in the car... This doesn't match with my train of thought, but... Because if she was already in the car, I mean, I guess the the defendant would have had the keys on her him, so it's not like she would have had access to the keys on her own. When the when the body reached the car, it would have already been dead, ready to be stuffed in the trunk. So why would she be sitting there waiting for that? Well, it could have been a spirit, right? I mean, she would know a thing or two about spirits, right? Oh. 
Uh, still maintain the witness was in a different place at the time. Sorry, more or less. Oh, come, that was Faye. Well, then please answer this question. Okay, here we go again. It's not the car. Yeah, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's not the bushes. It's not the other side. Was she actually standing here at the time? Is it still here? But that doesn't make any sense, because then, like, she would have... She still needed to... Hmm. Wait, no. Oh, okay, we're going down this path. Like I said, I need to stop being so kind to the, the witnesses. Naturally, the witness was standing right here. No? Wait, is she the victim then? <gasps> no, she couldn't have been the victim. But she was standing where the victim was, so maybe the victim... Okay. I think I know. I think I know. I, I know I didn't save, but that's fine. I'm still, like... Part of me thinks that this might not be it, but, like, it goes so far that I feel like it, it's gotta be it. That we need to, like, point out this location. I think we're on the right track with this whole thing. It has to be, because, like, we presented new evidence and everything, right? Like, it has to be this. So she put the corpse in herself. Wait, okay, so she, she, yeah, she had been saying where the victim was. She posed as the victim. That's why the scarf wasn't on the body, because it was on her. Of course. We've seen this before, in fact. Which, which case was it? Where they were saying where the victim was. Oh no, I think we were pointing out where to kill- No, I thought there was one where we also pointed out where the victim was. Has to be. It's the only thing that makes sense. Okay. Here we go. So where was it? Right here. Right where the victim's standing. Yeah! Naturally, the witness was right here. But, but that's... But that's where the victim, Miss Hawthorne, was standing. Order! Order! Miss Faye, what on earth? Your Honor, if I may. After parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendant fled by car. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it could only have been before the defendant met the victim. So she killed her, stuffed it in the trunk of the car that he stole, and then managed to sneak out onto the bridge before he got out of the I guess? Like, okay, what did she do then? Like, she was sitting there waiting for the victim to come up? Killed her? Like, hid in the bushes with the body or something? And then when the car arrived, she just, like, somehow broke into the trunk, stuffed it in, and then posed as the victim? It'd have only been before the defendant met the victim. How asinine. Of course Miss Falls met with the victim. The only person with the opportunity to have put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Falls. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Edgeworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. What? I've never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. What? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Miss Falls, Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. Me? Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Falls himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. But the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped get him convicted. But she, he still needed the scarf to identify her. But since then, my client has spent five hard years in the federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You're just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? Got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this case wide open. At the time of the incident, Mr. Falls had forgotten what Valley Hawthorne looked like. Mr. Falls had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification. 
namely this muddy scarf. Huh. It was Mr. False who's requested that she wear this scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by the note the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well, what do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? She's not denying it. Oh, yeah, nope. That must have been it. Uh, where's Miss Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Hmm. It's obvious that Miss Alyssa Foster did it. She hid the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. She said the camera did snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is, why did she do it? Well, isn't it that obvious? She's the real culprit. <laughs> yeah, but why, though? Well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to compose herself again before we start. Until then, this court is in recess. Defendants and the prosecution are both away in their respective lobbies. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Very well. This court is in recess. To be continued. I mean, how much more could there be? Well, we solved this thing, right? Apparently there's a second half. It's their false. I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're real good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. Uh, we're almost there. Once I proved that she committed the crime... It... Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we gotta get past. The obstacle? Yeah. Motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident hap happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case at Zebra Boys on death row 4. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never lie. Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay. I trust you. That day, five years ago, I dream of it. Every day. This picture reminds me of everything. Bridge looks the same, just like then, five years ago. Like it could fall apart. Fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. No one's fixed it? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You sound like that one. Like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It's true. I, I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped. My girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. Y your girlfriend? Huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne, Valerie's little sister. What? Are you serious? Shut up! Come closer! That killer! Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. At first I thought shooting someone for kidnapping was crossing the line, but... If it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Wrong. No protect sister. Valerie betrayed me. Betray us. What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. I'll make believe. Kidnapping too. Make believe kidnapping? Dahlia. 
My girlfriend. My love. My teen angel. Ugh, did he actually say my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. Do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says? Uh, hold on a minute. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Valerie was in on it? Well, okay, hold on. If everyone was in on it, is it really a kidnapping? It's not how kidnappings work. Dahlia's family rich. Julie business. Give one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We sent to her dad. Asked for two million dollar diamond. Tell him make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you're planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman. That woman, Valerie, she do it for real. She shoot at me for real. Me and Dahlia. What, she has changed her mind? A shot in the arm. Dahlia, she jump in river. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I could do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. That's why when the detective when they decide to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the roaring river 40 feet below. It's five years. I wonder is why? 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 Why did she lie? That's all I wanted to know. So that's why you called her. You want to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes. But I forgot what she looked like. So I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. Just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? Just want to hear answer come from her mouth. That's all. So that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, Zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. You tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Huh? Where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No, really. I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? Did she just, like, take the money and run? <laughs> like, she just, like, took the diamond? This was all her plan. She just wanted the money to herself. That day, on the bridge. Dali put it in backpack. Now gone. With Dahlia. Gone. Forever. Into Eagle River. Disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now. We're ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean that Diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her. My sweet Dahlia. Never found her? So I'll buy the river. Gone. Dahlia. My teen angel. Your teen angel. How old was she anyway? Just 14. 14? Guess you're robbing cradles before diamonds. Yeah, wait, how old is this guy? Or is he even? 25. Okay. Finds a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock with two mil. Man, oh man. Angels these days. Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel or is she really a... Stop, I'm kidding. Looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. 
2 million dollar gem used as ransom for Dahlia, lost to Eagle River five years ago. Training wheels come off now, Mia. You've got to strike while the iron is hot. That's one of my rules. Remember it. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Y yes Your Honor. I I'll try my best. Hmm. You're a brave young lady. Not this again. What was this, uh, blocked out? Ah, okay. It's Dahlia's profile now. I can understand the defense lawyer wanted to get her client off the hook. However, try to pin the crime on an innocent student is, uh... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. That's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm. It's certainly hard to imagine this woman is a murderer. A motive, huh? I figured that's why I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence of a motive? Uh, yes, of course. I, I think. Huh. He's still acting as tame as a kitten. Kitten. Sir Armando, listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Yeah, he would know a thing or two about keeping his cool, wouldn't he? Um, excuse me, may I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course! Mr. Judge is ready anytime you like. I'd like... I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why... I, I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that's not true. Hmm, I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. Looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her, click. She lights right up. Honest enough saying until she gets thrown in jail. Well, the thing is, if this is the person I'm thinking it is, which it could be, uh, spoiler, she doesn't get thrown in jail. At least not this time. Very well then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. I, I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I'd never been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have a reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. Or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm. Out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Shut up those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow I have to tie her to this case. Alright. I think we have just the evidence for that. Aw, oh, shit. You mean we got, like, a to-be-continued, a hard save, all that fun stuff, and you're telling me we didn't get a refresh on the meter? I guess it's still the same day of trial, so... So, what country were you living in, then? We were all living abroad, but after my parents were killed... Uh... It was a brutal civil war. She had tried to make her way back home alone. Where the fuck were they? I lost everything. I didn't even have my personal identification. What kind of sob story is this? What do I do? Should I press her for details? Yes. This is court. She needs to learn. Witness, answer my question. I'll even repeat it for you. What country were you in? Your Honor, this line of questioning is childish. What country she was in and how many languages she may speak are irrelevant here. What we're here to evaluate is whether this witness has any connection to this case. I've lived abroad ever since I was a little girl. That's why I could never have known Mr. Falls or Detective Hawthorne. Yes, I think we've established that point. Yes, indeed. Well then, shall we add what you've just stated to the official testimony? Yes, please, Mr. Judge. Hmm, suspicious, but I like it. 
You didn't know either person. Are you certain of that? Yes. I'm afraid I rather shy around people. Hmm. Oh well. That can't be helped. Why is he just agreeing with everything that comes out of her mouth? The first time you saw either of them was when they were on the bridge, correct? Yes, it really was a coincidence. Until I entered college, I'd never even been to Eagle Mountain before. Uh-huh. So what made you decide to go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just love being outdoors, picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. In the middle of winter. Even if it is California, I mean, it's probably still a little chilly up in the mountains. You don't look like much of a hiker to me, but you do look like a digger of sorts. But Eagle Mountain is a two-hour drive from here, and no trains run through there. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went there once with the college hiking club. I fell in love with its stark, desolate beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. Didn't know you were such a goth. By the way, what's the name of your college? The prosecution ex objects to any questions that involve the witness's private life. All that matters is that she's a material witness to a crime. The witness doesn't need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious in the tent. Thank you. She's really gone too far. Hmm. <clears throat> Miss Faye, you're treading on thin ice here. Hardly said anything. Talk about sensitive. Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only do you have, have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things that you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. Well, that's, uh... Unfortunately, Miss Faye, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that, at the time, an officer showed her this photo. Hmm, that seems like a rather serious mistake. That's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. That's not fair. Wicked inmate, I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. A crutch? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such a deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful. Your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client? I forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Mr. False is kind of forgetful. He said he forgot what the, the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a scar white scarf that day, that he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Falls' reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Uh, it's probably fine to add it, right? When's that been harmful? Your Honor, what the witness ju said just now is tremendously important. I'd like to add it added to the official testimony. Prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally imbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's not what I... Enough. Witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. I mean, again, when has been adding a piece of testimony to the uh, record been a bad thing? I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Ah, okay. Is that what we're gonna go after here? What do you mean by lucky? Well, it's February now. Everyone is wearing scarves. If I had accidentally worn a white scarf like he said, then you yourself might have been killed. Hmm, that would have been a terrible loss for this world. <laughs> Looks like you passed too hard this, pressed too hard this time, kitten. Sir Armando, 
keep looking around you, going to lose sight of the finish line. Justice is blind, but she's not deaf. Sometimes you have to know when not to talk. Wait, really? Did I actually... What? No way. I mean, it's fine, right? As long as we point out the contradiction, it doesn't matter, right? You knew about that incident? But you weren't you out of the country until the year before last? Well, I saw a report about the escaped convict on the news. It had an in-depth report about his whole history. So you're still living in abroad five years ago, is that right? Yes. Can't let her get away with these lies. Listen to me. She's neck deep in this whole thing. Somehow, you're just gonna have to get her to show the court her true self. Uh, I'm scared to save after everything, uh, good, I mean, uh, Diego has told us. Uh, I'm, I feel like I might have added too much to the testimony, like, maybe it is possible. Okay. We know that all this stuff is probably a lie. Like, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that, that thinks who she really is, right? But we gotta figure out how we're gonna present this. Because the only new evidence we have is this gem. Okay, so we need to establish motive here. I certainly don't have a reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Use this ransom for Dahlia. I mean, this seems like what we need. But we can't connect her to the incident from five years ago yet. I don't think that's possible. Only a grudge of killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Was she wearing a white scarf? That was the thing. Now, Edgeworth brought this up earlier, but it didn't... The, even he admitted this wasn't really white. It's more blue than white. Is that what we're going for? I'm saving. I'm gonna save here. I don't think... I don't think we could have messed this up. I think we're fine. Do we want to try the scarf because it's not technically white? Is that kind of a thing this game's going to do? I mean, when has color ever been important? Has color ever been a factor? Like, there's got to be a good reason why they design all the photos in this game to be black and white, right? Because they don't want color to matter. Like, what if you can't tell that's a blue scarf? Maybe I'm overthinking it. But it does seem like a possibility. I think the fan is a terrible, horrible monster. I was out of the country until the year before last. So two years ago. We don't have anything related to two years ago, right? Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. That implies Dolly is alive. Okay, I have an idea here. Naturally, I didn't know either of the victim and defendant until I entered college and never been to Eagle Mountain before. Certainly, the only reason for running to her police officer, holding a grudge and cleaning officer, testified against you five years ago. Can't be a poor girl, I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Do we present the note because we know the truth and that Dahlia didn't kidnap anyone? Or Dahlia wasn't really technically kidnapped? No, okay. We'll just uh, load back there. Only a grudge and killing officer testified against you five years ago. I feel like that bit about Dahlia in the note might be important here. Because we can't, like, we don't have any definitive proof that connects Melissa to the events five years ago. Out of the country until the year before last. Naturally, I didn't know either the victim or the defendant. Yeah, as far as we know, that's true. Probably isn't, but it seems true. Till I entered college, never been to Eagle Mountain before. Certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Do we present the rock? 
No. Like, it's just, like, general potential motive. I mean, we don't even know where the rock is right now, of course. Kidnapping a poor girl, I just think that the fan is a terrible, horrible monster. Client sends to death five years ago. Okay. He witness in the case against Falls five years ago. Hmm. Holding a grudge and killing the officer to testify against you five years ago. That seems important, but like, that does match up. She did testify against him five years ago. Certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. That's a little suspicious. How? I'm not sure yet. You know what? Okay, let's go for the scarf. Maybe they are going for color. Maybe this really is. It really... Okay, it really was. I I overthought it so hard, I went back around to underthinking it. Witness, I want you to take a look at the, the... I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in this photo, but... Look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, you're talking about this scarf right here, eh? Y yes, that's it. That's the scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you say the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. White? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but... There's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is... Ah, uh, because of the note? Witness, have you ever seen this note? Note? I, I, uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Hmm, I wonder about that. I wonder if you could have presented a note. Then just be like, hey, uh, how did you... What, 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 why are you, like, so adamant on being white scarf? I guess you probably heard us talking about in court, so maybe that's why. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Falls' instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for identification. White scarf? Witness, you knew what this note said. And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said, White Scarf. Yeah, where else would she have gotten that detail from? Well, Miss Foster? Order! Order! Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite... limited. Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note to Valerie Hawthorne is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say, one more person? That's right. A person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yep. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... And that person is... Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her name. Right there. What's this? So who is this person? This... Dahlia Hawthorne. Miss Faye must be desperate. She's trying to bring the dead back to life. The... the dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in the crime five years ago. Killed in the crime? Y you don't mean... 
Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. All right, now we've connected the old case, so now we gotta prove that he didn't do that either. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought that she had died five years ago, when she fell off of Dusky Bridge and was lost in Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne is 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster. I believe that's the same age you are. I mean, lots of people are 19, right? Even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not sane. But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Wh what? Huh. Nice work. I was like tossing the grenade into a three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together. You're nothing but a hit-and-run arsonist. I understand. If I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now's my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth squirm. Hmm. Hmm. Witness. Just who are you, anyway? I I'm... I didn't think it would come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, Witness. Wait, does Edgeworth know? Yes, I understand. What? Miss Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have no an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't. You don't mean... Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? If you hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Wait, are you telling me this Dahlia Hawthorne is the same Dahlia Hawthorne from the first case in the game? No way! But... But I thought she died five years ago. We thought so too as well. But, well, as you can see... Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Really, Miss Faye? I must say your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. Dare you? Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. But even worse than that, five years later... Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious. A big sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. I mean, it does sound pretty insane, but... We have to blame someone here. Okay, it can't be our client, obviously. I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? A possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see... I thought I was winning. Somehow he's turned it around on me. I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. The fence is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Okay... There it is. Uh, uh, that wasn't me. It was this guy. It's 
Crazy coffee addict. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. <laughs> Makes you think they're empty, boy. Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? <laughs> the rashness of youth. How charming. Coming from someone younger than me. Now then, let's not waste any more time. Miss Faye. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? Well, the gem, right? But... If she's Dahlia, wouldn't she still have the gem? That's the only motive I can think of, though. N nothing else here... screams motive. It, like, she asked for it back? It's gotta be this. What is this? Is this the defense's idea of a joke? If so, I certainly don't get the punchline. Well, Miss Faye? Oh, that was... The rashness of youth. Oh, okay. Alright. Is it? Yeah. Okay, well, then what else is the... What, what's the motive here? It's the only item in the thing that even looks like a motive. But yeah, it doesn't make sense, because she would have still had the diamond. Okay. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? Oh, is it the truth thing? Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. She didn't want to say the truth. She wants to keep something hidden. She has a secret. It's probably her identity. Story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. The whole truth? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. And as we know from the first case, this woman will do anything to protect herself. Terrific story, Miss Faye. If you like fish, and that is. And light into the court, Miss Faye. What was the secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dahlia Valley Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh, yes. I know the secret. Your Honor, defense would like to request further testimony. W what testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it'll explain a lot of things, such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Very well. I'll grant you a request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful for you, but can you please enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf? Y yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm once more, Dahlia. This will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond, and my sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. No, you decided to take the money for yourself, sell the diamond, and and live rich without anyone knowing. Mm. The kidnapping left in her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And weird to believe after all that she murdered her sister. Posturous. Thank you, Miss Edgeworth. Miss Fay? Yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got to jump on me again. 
We're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up. We still got that info. That ace up our sleeve. W what info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right, it was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us in the lobby. I'd do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. What you're saying is the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie too. Yes, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's our secret. Okay, so that's the angle we're gonna play here. Alright, well I think we can definitely save here then. Did you and Mr. Falls have a relationship? Y yes as a tutor. You were tutoring him, Mr. Falls? No, of, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Falls came to the house to tutor me. That makes sense. Five years ago, she was only 14. He probably came up with the kidnapping plan during that time. The Hawthorns are in the jewelry and trade and are quite wealthy, you see. Hmm. Quite the clever fellow, that Mr. Falls. Is that here, right? Did you just call Mr. Falls a clever fellow? Well, he was a tutor. Oh, maybe he got hit on the head in prison or something. I heard the diamond is valued in the neighborhood of two million dollars. Two million dollars? Yeah, that's like five million in in Canadian money. It's even more. It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a pint of milk. That is a huge diamond. What the fuck? Two million dollar pint of milk. I don't know what to think about that. Yeah, he wouldn't know what a pint of milk is. <laughs> we, we, no one knows what a pint of milk is up here. First of all, as we all know, our milk's in bags. So, who knows what size that is. Second of all, we don't know what a pint is. Is that like, a liter? Two liters? I mean, it sounds pretty big. The defendant demanded that her sister Valerie make the exchange. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. By the way, I want to ask you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why do you think he wanted to make the exchange up there on the mountain? If he ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. In a place like that, it would be easy to tell if he was being followed. With only one entrance to the mountain, he was ensuring his safety. Which, of course, has the downside of one way in means one way out. Easy to block. A wickedly clever man that Mr. Falls is. Yeah, right. It was all your plan. Anyway, Valerie brought the diamond to the mountain and... That was a dangerous thing to do considering you are being held hostage. Yes, but actually, that saved my life. What do you mean? You see, Mr. Falls was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow I just knew he was going to use it. I knew he was going to use that knife to kill me. That's why my sister shot him. It was to save me. So what, you thought that Falls betrayed you? Maybe he did. I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, miss, when Mr. Falls was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. I, I was dazed. I turned to run, try and run away, but Mr. Falls turned to grab me as well. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, and he gave me a large, bloodthirsty grin. Bloodthirsty grin? Ooh. And the next install, uh, next instant. You jumped into the river, right? Or, oh, sorry, pushed into the river. I advise the court to remember that the river is 18 feet deep and incredibly, incredibly swift. I was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I'd been carried away by the river to a strange place. I'll never forget that day. The crumbling bridge, nowhere to run. Then just one little shove from behind. That was it. Before my sister could catch me, I fell into the river. And that's why you hid your identity. Yes, I only told my sister. 
Valerie Hawthorne, eh? Yes, she's the only one who knew about me. Meanwhile, legally, this witness has been deceased for five years. I... I didn't ever want something like that to happen to me again. It's a moment of truth for his witness, too. Once the truth about this stage kidnapping comes out, everyone in the court will know how much of a Jezebel she really is. I just gotta prove that kidnapping was a hoax. I didn't press the last thing. Exchange shot Mr. Falls in the arm, that's when Kate... Ah, uh, here. And that new identity was Melissa Foster, right? Yes, my sister helped me get the official paperwork taken care of. That makes sense. Without an insider's help, doing all the paperwork would have been impossible. He was the only person left in the world I could count on. And you think I killed her? There's no way I could. Hmm. Okay, so we gotta prove that kidnapping was a hoax. It was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. Sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. Okay, let's save here. Is there anything for any of this? Two million dollar gem uses ransom for Dahlia Lost Eagle River five years ago. So, I think she claims to have kept it, right? Tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might get kidnapped again for my family's money. Decided to change my name and identity and start a new life. But she still had the diamond. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. Okay, hang on a second. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. Hold on. No, she didn't. Okay, it's probably the other one. I'm certain this is it. Because it was in Valerie's back or Dolly's backpack. No? Okay, because, like, that's what Mr. Falls said, is that the diamond was in her backpack, because when she jumped off the river, she took the diamond with her. Okay, after she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. I thought the exchange never took place. Well, I guess it did. No, okay, that's fine. Yeah, she brought the diamond, and then she put it in her backpack. I guess that's technically an exchange. I was under the impression that she took it in her backpack. But I guess that would have been weird if she took the backpack with the diamond from home. If she's supposed to have been kidnapped and the diamond was supposed to be ransomed. So yeah, never mind. That was, that was a stupid thing to, to claim. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. Okay, so this is like the crux of everything we need to prove is wrong here. But I don't think this one's it. Escaped from custody two days ago. Valerie's younger sister, victim of the kidnap murder, fell from bridge, no body found. A raw diamond, my sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. Well, it does look pretty raw. I mean, it's in... It's still in a rock. In the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. Also tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I okay. I'm one like one train of thought here I'm going for is if the diamond was that big, if it was as big as a carn of milk. That'd be a pretty heavy diamond. That's a big rock. Could he have really shoved her off a bridge? With, like, such a big rock in her backpack. I'm wondering if that's maybe what we need to catch her on. Because, like, okay, let's say, let's go with her, her, her version of events here. Valerie gives the diamond to Mr. Falls. Mr. Falls is now holding this giant, heavy diamond. And you're telling me that he still managed to shove her off? 
I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's what we need to do here. It doesn't make a lot of sense because I tried to do, use the same train of thought earlier and that didn't work. So I don't know if the game's going to try and do it again. Maybe that's the trick here. Smile, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. Uses ransom for Dolly Lost Eagle River five years ago. Hmm. But if she was kidnapped again, if the diamond was lost in the river with her, well, I guess, yeah, it made me kidnap to take the money, but why wouldn't someone just, like, steal the money from her? So I had to change my identity and start a new life. With a $2 million diamond, yeah. But I don't think we can present that there. I'm gonna try this. Okay, didn't think so. Yeah, I figured that was, like, weird. Oh, you can't shove it? You're too heavy. No. She's 14 years old. I don't think the diamond's gonna add that much weight. And Spice is brought down, and Sister Valley brought it to the bridge. Okay. She made the exchange, shot Mr. Falls in the arm because of the knife. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I guess? I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. Maybe this one? It's gotta be the diamond. Like, what else would it be? Is there something in here? Everything else is from the current case, so it, it can't be any of that stuff. Talk to Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. There doesn't seem to be anything in there either. So it's gotta be the diamond, because every other piece of evidence here is from the current case. So I change my identity and start a new life. It's gotta be the diamond. Should I think of which one of these would make the most sense, Kate? So it's not- I don't think it's gonna be this one. This one's just establishing events. We know that, yeah, he- she was kidnapped, quote-unquote, by Mr. Falls. Ransom Price was a raw diamond. Sister Valley brought it to the bridge. All right. So she just hands over the diamond as part of the uh, fake kidnapping. But like, we know that she didn't get shot or I don't, she didn't actually let off a bullet, did she? I don't think that was mentioned in the, uh, in the recess. I think she just like, cause she said she jumped or he said that she jumped off the bridge voluntarily. Okay, we know this part's wrong, but I don't know how to prove that it's wrong. Unless there's a profile here. Escape from custody two days ago, offense to death. Nope, that's right. Bellie's younger sis, sis, victim of the kidnap murder, fell from bridge, no body found. Is, is, are we saying that falling is different than getting shoved? Because I would argue one can get shoved and then fall. Yeah, I figured. That didn't make any sense to think that way. What am I missing here? Okay. Survived, I was afraid I might be kidnapped from my family's money. I decided to change my identity and start a new life. Right. Because she, like... Well, okay. Was this before or after she was pronounced dead legally? Because that might be important here. But we pressed it, and pressing it just said that her sister helped her with it. That could still be relevant. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know. So this falls try to kill me. Okay, I don't think it's that one. We already tried that one. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. I mean, there's no evidence of that, of course. I am really not sure which one this is. I might look this one up, because otherwise we're just going to be sitting here testing all the evidence with everything. So I, I'm, I'm clearly missing something in the logic here. I even tried some weird things of like, oh, it's just a difference in words. No, doesn't seem like that. Let's see here. And it opened not too long ago. Where the hell did it go? I literally just had it open. There it is. No, that's not it. There it is. Okay. So I'm thinking, like, it's got to be the diamond. Okay, so I survived. I was afraid I might get kidnapped from family's money, so I decided to change. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. She made the exchange. She shot Mr. Falls in the arm. Okay. Maybe... Maybe it's something more esoteric, like the actual, like, setup here of event. Like, where everyone is standing. Can we take that flashback image as proof? <laughs> Is that hard evidence in court? A fake image conjured by the mind. Well, I guess that's just a witness testimony when you think about it. Shoving me off the bridge from behind. Is this still relevant from five years ago? Because I was thinking, it's like, how do you shove someone from behind? Like, if you were to push someone forward, wouldn't they just fall onto the bridge? That behind is very specific. You know what, I'm gonna try something. That behind is very specific. You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. B but it's true, I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it, it was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear enough. I should have said, that's hard to believe. I should have said, that's impossible. Impossible? I asked that the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge, now and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in the last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind, as you had claimed... Okay, so I think the part I wasn't missing, I was missing here. And the part that's not really clear, it's not really... I guess we really were supposed to take that image as, like, kind of? Sort of? No, that image is wrong. The flashback image, the artist's depiction of events, is not real. But we don't actually know where anyone was standing. I guess it was kind of implied that, like, the... that falls and... and and the, the police officer were standing in the same positions that they were now, also five years ago, except that Falls had Dahlia with him. It still doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not really sure where they were supposed to be standing. I, that didn't seem really established. My theory was based on the idea, okay, well, if, if he's holding the girl and he shoves her from behind, she would just fall down onto the bridge. Because no matter where they're standing, if they're facing each other, there's clearly bridge in the way. You can't fall into the river if there's bridge. This looked like, what we just saw here, it looked like he would have had to push her back. Like, it looked like Mori just pushed backwards and not from the back. 
Isn't that what you said? You just pushed from... She said she she was pushed from behind, right? Or was she pushed back? Did I, like, misunderstand? Either way, I think my, my theory is somewhat logical. I mean, we don't... I don't think we had enough information about where they were standing for this, like, actual specific scenario to make sense. But, I mean, it's the same... It's a similar idea. You would have been smashed by the bedrock below. A most certain death. I was just going like, hey, you could have been shoved off the bridge if that's how you were pushed. Do you understand now, Medalia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Yes, he pushed from behind. As in, shoved on the back, forward. That doesn't even match the animation that they showed. Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. You're right. The events occurred just as the witness testified. Then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what's the meaning of this? Uh, I... I... Uh... You see, I... Just a moment, Your Honor. It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell the, from the back end of the bridge. Thank you, Edgeworth. Someone making sense here. Well, what do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's possible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. Okay, well, that's not quite what I was thinking, but... Uh, he was on the right track. He had the spirit. If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. What was Hawthorne? Is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, uh, I do remember now. When I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. Is that what we're going with here? That sounds like bullshit. Order! Order in the court! It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Uh, because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. Um, it does? Push her from the side. Wait, what? Huh. Okay, what am I missing in the logic now? Fell from bridge, no body found. Are we are we still in plot? Okay, no. His his, his theory was that he would have pushed her from the side and she fell into the river. And we're trying to prove that it's impossible for him to have pushed her from the side? Okay, if we're going off the idea that they're back here, then wouldn't a side push also push her into here? To the rocks? Well, no, because like he just... They did a demonstration and he would have pushed her... Hmm... Maybe? Take my witness bridge unchanged for five years. Okay, hang on. Let's check this. Oh! That's why it'd be impossible. You can't actually jump off the side of the bridge. Literally impossible to fall off the side of the bridge. Well, okay, not impossible. You could totally slip through there if you tried, but... 
Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. Well, let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. Well, okay, well, now we're going to throwing? We went from a light shove to, like, a hard, like, slip accidental shove to now we're just picking up and chucking her like fucking Mario 2 or something. That's a big leap there, Edgeworth. A toss, if you will. So young and already f so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Falls has been shot on the right arm. And more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That's clearly impossible. Order! Order! What's the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Why was there a, a raptor in the courtroom? What the hell was that noise? <laughs> Indeed. What do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Y yes, it's ridiculous. M my sister was there to help me. She had a gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. But you said you survived. You, 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 uh, did. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what she did. You're probably confident that you can handle the swift current. I'm a, I'm a save here. I don't know what's coming up, but clearly it doesn't sound like we're done. But even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, here it comes. Oh, and what was it? What was it so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of Eagle River. It's the diamond, isn't it? Yeah. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. No. It, it can't be. Yes, Dahlia had it planned from the beginning. The two million dollars. She was going to keep it all for herself. That sounds like something she'd do. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river. With the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Why, that's... That's simply ridiculous. Order, order, order. Your Honor, five years ago the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon. There is one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? She was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister Dahlia, and then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is why you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. <laughs> Who is that? Laughing at a time like this. Imagine getting away with murder twice. 
it gave me. It's just hilarious. Witness? Is that you? You amuse me, women. Miss Mia Fey. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally. You have the evidence to back it up, don't you? E evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14 I plotted with Miss Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence, at least show that. Hmm. Well, Miss Faye? I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye. You stupid or something. I proof of fake kidnapping that happened five years ago. Oh, you have decisive proof of Valley Hawthorne's murder. Yeah, actually, wait, hang on a second. Because she was in the, the, the in Mia's second case, right? And we, we found her guilty there as well. But if we're finding her guilty now, how the fuck was she still around for the second case? And no one said anything. I'm not misremembering that case, am I? I mean, it was a few weeks ago since we played it, but... Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, uh, witnesses' behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I'm forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. Is it? Is it really over? Ah, because we don't actually get her found guilty. We don't have proof. That girl's made a fool of me and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Without evidence, the trial is over. Who decided that? M Mr. Armando. Come on now, kitten. Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. T testimony On the day in question, Dally Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valley Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. Falls' stolen car and went on to meet with him. Skies is her sister, Valley Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Yes, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valley Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who is the one person who can testify to that demon woman's crimes? Well, obviously it's uh, him. Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness? Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant. There's only one person that can shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether that person in the photo is Valley Hawthorne. Or whether it was in fact her younger sister Dahlia disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. And that person is Terry Falls. Well, Miss Edgeworth, what's your take on this? Why not? Prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? Uh, um, I don't believe it. No way. Dahlia died five years ago. Valerie betrayed me. Mr. Falls, I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive. And you were used for two million dollars. That's not true. Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge. Who did you meet? Was it Valley Hawthorne? Or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia. Dahlia. Uh, did you... Did you betray me? Five years ago she promised... She promised never ever betray each other. Terry. Dahlia. It, it's true. You are alive. You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth. The real truth. I... I believed in you. 
I didn't need to say it. You already know. But there's one thing that I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. Th Alia. I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls. Yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Witness! Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. There it is. Finally. The judge says sorry. Took long enough. How would we go this whole time without the Canadian judge saying sorry? Uh, what a... P please, what a... Hmm? Can't talk. Needs water. <laughs> oh well. Guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitter than hell itself. That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of the bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on bridge. I watched my car from bridge. I never put nobody in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked. Then she left. That was... That was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. Okay. Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. Do you think she would do the same for you? That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Well then, Miss Faye, please proceed with your cross-examination. So you want it to end, Mr. Falls? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence? There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten. I think. You think? I'm not very confident. What happened to Mr. Confident? Okay, 4 p.m. Stop the car in front of the bridge. All right. According to the note, the meeting was supposed to take place at 4.30. You certainly arrived early, didn't you? It was raining. Already dark, too. You waited on the bridge for 30 minutes? In the rain and the cold? <sighs> this guy's insane. Mr. Falls? Eagle Mountain. That spot. Strong, strong memories. Why did he just clam up? Could it be he's hiding something here? You are quite early, so you waited on the bridge, correct? Yeah, I like waiting. I'm used to it. I'm sure he is. Zero Boy waited five years to ask a single question. To find out why a woman betrayed him. To him, the mates must have been in the blink of an eye. You are watching the car. That bridge. Other side is broken. Nobody can come from there. So, I was watching car. What else were you expecting him to do? I suppose that's the obvious thing to do, but something's bothering me. I'm getting that feeling. A contradiction? Yeah, like, if he was standing there, if he got there early, watching the road where he came from, how did the victim go onto the bridge and he just, like, let her walk past him to the other end of the bridge so they could talk? Like... Why not just talk on the the side on the road by the car? Why do you need to be on the bridge? And why do you need to make make sure it's the exact same setup as it was like five years ago or something? It's like, oh, you're here. Please, this way. Get onto the bridge, please. Definitely not suspicious or anything. Wonder what's on the other side of the broken bridge anyway. No one lives there. There's a small shrine up on the mountain, but that's it. Anyway, nobody came. No car, nothing. So where'd the women come from? Mr. Falls, think carefully now. Are you certain that it was Valerie Hawthorne? Uh, uh, uh... I never lie. It's the truth. It was Valerie. I remember her face. Wait a minute. If you had remembered her face, then why did you make her wear a scarf as identification? Uh, sorry. I told a little lie. But, the woman I met, she was different from the woman standing here now. She was different. It was Valerie. Hold 
What did you talk to her about anyway? Yes or false? Valley told the truth about the kidnapping five years ago. She said someone needed to take the blame for it. That was all I could think to do. She said that. That's why she lied. Got me the death penalty. And you were satisfied with that answer, witness? Dahlia died. It was my fault. But I don't really remember. Maybe I did. Maybe I did push her in. Don't matter no more. Either way, but Dahlia, my sweet teen angel, dead. You just saw that she isn't dead. After Valley talked to me on bridge, nothing left to live for. How can you be so sure? It was rainy at the time, and sunset that day was at 5 o'clock. It would have been already pretty dark on that mountain at 4.30. Please, Mr. Falls, this is your last chance. You've already taken the fall once for something you didn't do. That woman wasn't Dahlia. Stop right there. What more needs to be said? Hmm. Even if it means a death penalty. Even if it means taking the blame for murder. You'll still do whatever it is necessary to protect her, won't you, Mr. Falls? I know it's obvious, but he's clearly lying. He's been cursed by Dahlia Hawthorne. He'll probably go to his grave still believing in her. Mr. Falls. If you can show he's lying, the poor guy will still be cursed. You'll still have to point out the contradiction anyway. That's the curse of being a defense lawyer, I guess. Okay. So where... Which one of these can we possibly present on? So at 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of the bridge. Okay. Fine. I mean... Death was between 4 and 5, so that's fine. She wasn't there, so I waited on bridge. See, this is the part where it gets weird. It's like you're just going to let her walk past you and, and go on the bridge so you can have your, your talk the way you want it. Watch my car from the bridge. I never put no body in that car. So that means you did put a body in the car. He watched the car from the bridge. Okay, I mean, that seems likely. Car's there. He's there. Looks good to me. One woman came. She stood in front of me. But where did she come from? Like, there's no other car here. How did she get here? Is that something we need to, to look into? Hmm. I mean, we never figured out exactly how she got to the bridge. We talked, then she left. Anything in here? No. Probably not. Okay, the, this note just talks about the meeting, right? Wear a white scarf for identification. Falls for 3 p.m. at that bridge. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Okay. How is Valerie not my Dahlia? Okay, so we established earlier that Dahlia already killed Valerie, stuffed the body in the trunk. What do we present here? Oh, the trunk of Fall's car. So if he was watching the car, then he never saw the body get put in there? Witness had photographed the incident on Dusty Bridge, okay. We talked, then she left. Do we want to present... Melissa's testimony? Because that's not what happened, obviously. There was a fight. Or there's yelling. I'm gonna try. No. That's not it. Okay. So I wasn't there, so I waited on the bridge. Well, yeah, because he got there 
half an hour early, so of course she's not there. Fine. Watch car from Edge, never put no body in that car. Okay, what exactly is the lie here? I mean, obviously he is, I'm just not sure what exactly we're looking for. One woman came, she stood in front of me. Is that it? Are we using this again? <laughs> Wait. Okay, hang on. She stood in front of me, but if he's standing there watching car, then this has to be the... There we go. So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge. You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well then, I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I'd love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at that bridge first? Just look at this photo. It's perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge, right? Yeah, exactly. That was kind of my thoughts. Like, they <laughs> just led her onto the bridge? But, but that's the victim at the end of the bridge. So what, is she just like... Okay, if he was standing there, facing the car, he just stood there for half an hour and didn't even, like, think to turn around and see that there's a person behind him? Like, he didn't see that person when he was walking towards the bridge? I guess it was foggy and dark. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. Um, Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. I go there around four o'clock. It's true. I, I had somewhere to go. A special place. Did you go to a special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah. It's an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia promised to each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under the base of the tree here, there. It's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. Hmm. Definitely never seen that necklace before. Slow bottle on the necklace is your memento. It's quite a charming. But it looks empty. Your Honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at 4 o'clock. But he then left his car and attended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. More than enough time for someone to get killed and stuffed in a trunk. Without him. With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. Indeed. There certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. So now we get to see how these two cases connect. Huh? Mr. Falls? Is that blood? <laughs> what the fuck did he do? Oh, it's from him biting his ball this whole time. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> That's enough. Please. W witness? I promised her five years ago, if it ever happens that we can't trust each other no more, then we're supposed to drink bottle. Oh, that's pretty dark. No, stop the trial. Your Honor, we need a recess. I am stupid. Couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank this. Wait. Just now he drank it in court? No, we are so close. Just a little more. That's going to prove your innocence. Yeah, but I mean, he probably still would have gone, been in jail for kidnapping. No, don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls. Mr. Amando. Th thanks for the coffee. Uh, 
Oh, did someone just die in court? Yo, what the fuck? So my first trial ended suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. I ended up with a wound that cut so deep into my soul I thought it'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person. The true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne. She left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. So we didn't have that necklace, therefore we couldn't actually convict her at the time. Unforgivable, that witch. <laughs> Mr. Armando, who was so close to the truth, was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're going to make my coffee all salty. Knew it. I knew I wasn't cut out for this. Mia. Don't you get it? You can't cry yet. Yo, what? Holy shit. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Mr. Armando. What the fuck? No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time. Then you file them away and eventually forget them. One year later in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. So she sneaks out of the courtroom. So after the after he kills himself, she got left the courtroom, dumped the bottle onto Phoenix, and then all that happened. She gets away with it because the bottle's gone. And they can't actually convict her until you know, the trial next year when we actually finally catch her for something else. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. Is finally all over. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I could have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. Oh, the last one should have been called Bridge to the Turnabout. Come on. The whole thing was about a bridge. Like, half the case was literally about a bridge. What the hell is this one going to be about? Isn't there, like, Ami Faye's statue in there? How much, like, history are we getting with this one? <gasps> what if we get to see Mia's, uh, Maya's mother? Is that her down there, maybe? Oh, man. Well, this is the finale case, of course, so it's going to be super long and super detailed and lots of exposition, of course. I'm looking forward to it. But that will... We'll start that next time. It'll probably be a two-parter. Probably. Um, I'm hoping we'll get to finish it. I'd like to finish the case, though, in the next couple of weeks, for sure. Because... Um, once, uh, my plan is when 14 comes out, we're going to be marathoning that, the whole story of it. I don't know how long that's going to take, but the fewer games I have to put on pause, the better. So, 
it would be very convenient if we could finish off the final case of this, take a little break, and then we'll come back to another Phoenix Wright game afterwards. But I'm very much looking forward to the finale of this. I, I hear this case is a very good one by many people from what I've read online. So looking forward to it. In the meantime, though, that will be it for today. That was a nice little short case. Definitely revealed a lot of information. I didn't think this case would be so informative for the plot. But we might have finally read or finally learned about our mysterious prosecutor. Or at least a little bit about him. I was kind of hoping we might get to see why he needs the visor or why he has the visor. Because it looked kind of cool, but surely there's a good reason for it. Maybe this case will explain it better. But that was pretty badass when he crushed the coffee mug in his hand. I was kind of waiting for something like that. Well, anyways, thank you all for watching tonight. I will be back tomorrow with uh, Rhythm Game stuff. And then Friday, of course, will be Minecraft. So, in the meantime, have a good night. And I will see you next time.